Hi, I'm Paul with Madcap Software. And in this video, I am going to take you through the steps to create a new Flare project. Now, I am going to go through the steps in a real quick manner, just to show you how easy and fast it can be. And then I'll go back through it again, and I'll go through the options in more detail in case you want to understand a little bit more. To create a new Flare project, just come in here to the Start page, click New Project. In the wizard, give it a name, location. I uh, won't worry about these other options. Click Next. Now you want to go through and select a project template that you want to use over here on the left, and it changes on the right. All right, so let's click Next. Now we can brand our output. So you just replace the values in these fields with your own company colors, font, and images. When you make your changes, the preview changes accordingly. Click Next. Don't worry about this because you can always change your primary target later. We're just going to keep this selected. Click Finish. All your files are now loaded into Flare and you have your new project. So that shows you just how quick it can actually go. But now let's go back through it and I'll talk about some of those options in a little more detail. Once again, I'll click New Project. So project name, that doesn't actually need much discussion. Project folder, this is the default location. It's going to be in your documents, my projects folder, and you can keep it there. I actually put my projects here in the C drive. And I've found that that can actually be helpful for different reasons. One being if you're on a team of writers and you want everybody to have the project at the same path. Language, that's really easy, whatever language your computer is set up to use. Bind to source control. Now, if I select this and click Next, I'm going to get some different pages of the wizard. That is if you want to bind your project to a source control solution, such as Git or Subversion or Perforce Helix Core, and you can put in the information. I'm going to deselect this. Another option you have is to get a Madcap Central subscription. And then later, once your project is loaded, you can bind your project to Madcap Central and you would be using Git behind the scenes for source control. All right, got those, click Next. All right, the templates. Now, I'm not gonna go into detail on each of these factory templates because I have a separate video where I go through each one of these. And if you wanna check that out, uh, you can look at the project templates video. And you also have this link right here, which will open up a Madcap software web page where there are additional templates. And you could download one of those instead. New from existing. So if you already have a Flare project, you could select that and it will base your new project on that existing one. Or you can click this new from import if you want to import some files and start a new project that way. I'm going to click next here. Now the branding. Most places have at least one or more company colors. And so you obviously go in and select those and you just click this and you can choose, you know, whatever you want. Probably a, a graphic designer will give you a hex number. You'll have an established color or you can use this little pick screen color option to float over something. Uh, maybe you have your company's website up and you click on that and, that, and you get your color. So you do that for any of these things you want and your font family, logo image, hero image. You just see that they all change as soon as you make your selections over here. Now, I also have another video where I go more into these fields in detail, and that is the branding video. And it goes beyond that to to talk about what you're dealing with in terms of branding after your project is loaded and how to work with that. But this one's pretty easy, so we'll just click Next. Now, the target is the file in your Flare project that you're going to use to generate your actual output, so it's really important. And in this particular template, we only have one that's set up, HTML5, which is what most people are going to use for online output. And even if this template were set up with multiple targets, you would you could still come in here and select what is your primary target. And that's not such a big deal because it's simply a way to create a shortcut for your target that you use the most. So you have some buttons that you can use to quickly generate output or publish output really quickly based on your 
uh, primary target. But there are additional targets, of course, uh, different output formats. There's print-based output types like PDF and Word and additional online ones. And it doesn't really matter what this field says here. You, you can always add additional targets to different output formats when you have your project loaded. So click Finish, and it's loaded. Now, once your project is loaded, you're going to see it is added to the recent files here on your start page. So you can quickly click on a project to open it. You're also going to see this template instructions PDF over here. You can open that PDF and make some further adjustments to your project. Uh, those are specific to whatever template that you selected. And then you can just delete that file because you won't need it anymore. Now, a lot of people want to add existing files, legacy files into their project. So you could, instead of just clicking new project, which this opens the same wizard that you just saw, you could make one of these selections and that will open up a different kind of wizard. So you can import different types and go through the wizard and it will be loaded. That's certainly an option. I think that probably what I would do is what we just did is use a template because you're going to be able to set up your branding and uh, the look and feel really quickly. And then what I probably would do if I wanted to import additional files, I would go into the project ribbon, select import, and make my selection in here, Word, Markdown, whatever, go through the wizard, it'll add those files to it. And that's all there is to creating a new Flare project. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you next time.